Now that we have discussed the basics of capnography, let's look at some common waveforms and how we interpret them. As was mentioned in the previous article, a normal waveform takes the shape of a square with an end tidal measurement or height between 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury with a baseline of zero. Below, we will see how changes in ventilation change the waveform shape and end tidal measurement. First, let's take a look at hyperventilation. The trademark sign of hyperventilation is a CO2 measurement less than 35 millimeters of mercury. This is because hyperventilation causes a decreased CO2 level in the body due to excess elimination from rapid breathing. The shape of the waveform is typically normal, but with each of the four phases shortened. Causes of hyperventilation can be anxiety, metabolic acidosis, and excessive exercise, among a myriad of other things. Next, let's talk about hypoventilation. The trademark sign of hypoventilation is a CO2 measurement greater than 45 millimeters of mercury. This is because hypoventilation causes an increased CO2 level in the body due to inadequate elimination of CO2. The shape of the waveform typically has a rapid phase 2, prolonged phase 3, and a rapid phase 4. Next, let's look at emphysema, asthma, and COPD. These all cause bronchospasms that result in the shark fin waveform morphology as phase 2 curves into phase 3. This morphology represents the work of breathing these patients exhibit as they struggle to exhale completely. In severe cases, air trapping will occur causing a buildup of CO2 in the lungs, which will result in end tidal measurements greater than 45 millimeters of mercury. Waveform capnography can be used to assess the quality of compressions during a cardiac arrest event. Good CPR should yield a reading of at least 10 millimeters of mercury or more. If the capnography reading is less than 10, the quality of compressions needs to improve. The person doing compressions is fatigued and needs to swap out with someone else, or the patient has been deceased for an extended period of time. If during the code, the end tidal reading rapidly increases to over 45 millimeters of mercury, return of spontaneous circulation has been achieved. This spike in end tidal occurs because the body has been accumulating CO2 due to reduced perfusion from only compressions. Suddenly, the heart kicks in and begins perfusing blood at a greater rate, releasing the buildup CO2. Lastly, let's talk about the curare cleft. A curare cleft is recognized by a sudden dip in the waveform during phase 3. This is seen in patients who are being ventilated through an ET tube. The cleft indicates that the neuromuscular blockade is wearing off and the patient is making an effort to breathe on their own. If this waveform is seen, you have roughly 2-3 to three minutes to administer another dose of a neuromuscular blockade before the patient emerges from paralysis.